Well, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Wednesday, and it's our start time here for our Pine Drive Baptist uh, prayer meeting. And, uh, and we're glad you're here tonight. We're glad we've got so many on. We know we've got some folks that are, that are not here tonight because they're traveling or they're, they're getting ready to travel or, or, or whatever, but it's just good to, to have what we have here tonight. Uh, we all, I know, enjoy, or you wouldn't be on here, uh, obviously, as, as consistently as you are, uh, to just pause in the middle of the week as, as uh, the family of God, as brother and sister Christians, and, 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 and just the, uh, the laughter and the comments and the things that we had even before we began uh, the live stream tonight. So it's just good to be here. It always uh, always encourages me and, and, and encourage, uh, laughter encourages me and just those things that, that all of you do that just really touch Pat and I so much. So I know you have your Bibles tonight and I want to take a look at 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, and uh, I want to read uh, the first five verses. This is a message that that I titled, and I was telling Ellen a little bit earlier that uh, one of the biggest things I have in developing a sermon after I get the research done is to find a title for it. Well, I found this title, uh, and I didn't find it. I, I made this title up. Get in the habit of addition before a crisis. Get in the habit of addition before a crisis. And obviously, you expect that I'm going to um, tell you what all that means. And, and that's my intent tonight. So let's take a look. Uh, as soon as I pray here at 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll begin in verse 1. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our heavenly Father God, Lord, uh, what a, another day you have given to us. Lord, uh, here where, where many of us are, uh, the, the early morning hours, even while it was dark, began with thunder and lightning, your thunder and your lightning from heaven, and uh, uh, Lord, just reminding, at least reminding me of the power that you have, um, the power over nature, the power to do things, the power to bring things into existence, and, and, and your word says that that power is living inside of each one of us who have accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, and, and have become his followers, Lord. So, Father, it's uh, and then and then during the afternoon hours here, it was just a beautiful sun for a while, and uh, and then the rain began again. God, you are you you're just um, you're just consistent in your love for us. You're consistent in showing that you are God and that you're in control of nature. And therefore, Lord, we know that it, because we're your children, you also are in control of us. So, Father, as we begin this study tonight and, and, then, uh, and then come before you with, with so many people that are on our prayer list and so many people that are in our hearts, Lord, some in the hospital right now, some just having undergone uh, a, a surgery or, um, or chemotherapy or whatever it is, Father, we want to lift them before the throne of grace tonight, knowing that, that you hear knowing that you want us to do this. You want us to lift these people before you, Lord. And, and even those that may be on our hearts that, that we know have no relationship with you, that you want us to lift those before you as well. And so, Father, speak to us tonight. Teach, teach us and meet us right where we are and what you know we need, not what we think we need. We pray these things in advance for what you will do because of your promises and because of your inerrant word. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let me begin reading 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, and I'll pick it up in verse 1. Uh, it says, Simon, Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. With that greeting from James, now look at uh, verse 3. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us 
his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Now here's the verse I want to concentrate on tonight. Verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and, and brotherly affection with love. Um, verse five again, um, your, your version, especially the King Game version, I didn't check a whole lot of other versions, but for this very reason, make an effort to supplement in the English Standard Version and the King James Version, it means to add, uh, to add or, or to supplement. And, and you're checking uh, uh, the Webster's Dictionary. It simply means to join or unite so as to bring an increase or an improvement, to join or unite so as to bring an increase um, or an improvement. We add or supplement means that we do something before a crisis. Uh, let me give you an example that I was reading that happily married couples appreciate what they each bring to a relationship. They, they come from different levels, different places. And he says, happily married couples appreciate what they each bring to a relationship. Their union is more than just the process of addition. One plus one now equals a deep sense of valuing and being valued. When we unite with God, covenant with God in, in marital ceremony, he says, one plus one now equals a deep sense of valuing and being valued. John Breton, an article that he was writing in, in the mirror said, uh, we shouldn't be satisfied with only an appearance of goodness or righteousness without spiritual discipline and holiness that results in, in nothing but empty posturing. Getting in the habit of addition, of one and one becoming three or, or, or even greater before a crisis happens. Um, let me give you seven encouragements here. Hopefully they're encouragements to, uh, to getting into this habit of, of addition before we reach a crisis. And, and let me just say up front, I, I was meditating this morning and, and, um, and reading uh, some of Charles, uh, uh, not Charles, uh, Oswald Chambers meditations. And, uh, and I came across this one, in fact, uh, that, uh, that just really touched my heart. And I said, you know, this would be a good message to encourage uh, the folks tonight. Uh, no matter where we are, no matter what we're facing, and, and just an encouragement to become more and more like Jesus wants us to become more and more uh, like Jesus Christ. And so the, the seven encouragements um, are, uh, first of all, do not forget that we cannot do what God does, and God will not do what we can do. Do not forget, and I know you won't, but do not forget that we cannot do what God does. We all know that. But remember also, God will not do for us what we can do. For example, we can't sanctify ourselves. We can't save ourselves, but, but God can. And God has done it for us. And God will do it for any who choose his son, Jesus Christ. God does that. And on the other hand, the other side of that coin, God's not going to force us to pray He's not going to force us to read the Bible. He's not going to force us to meditate. Not going to force us to go to church. He's not going to uh, uh, force us to be his hands, feet, voice, and heart for those that are on our prayer list or for those in our neighborhood or our businesses, those people that are hurting, hurting. We must do that. In other words, we must get into the habit of addition before a crisis, allowing God to grow us allowing God to move us closer and closer in his power towards him. So do not forget, we cannot do what God does 
and God's not going to do what, uh, what, what we can do ourselves. There's a second encouragement that I would just pass along. God did not give us good habits or character. God will not give us good, God gave us good habits and character and he will not force us to walk in this character, in this obedience to him. He, he gave us the good habits. He gave us the character, but he's not going to force us to be obedient and growing, growing closer, growing closer and closer to, to Jesus Christ. Uh, in other words, to be obedient to what God asks us or God tells us to do. In other words, we have to do that all by ourselves with, with the Holy Spirit's help when we begin to do that by ourselves. I want you to turn to Philippians chapter two for a moment. Going back there to Philippians chapter two. I tell you this all the time. I just love Philippians. Philippians chapter two. And take a look at what Paul said to the church of Philippi in uh, um, Look at verse 12, Philippians chapter two, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. Now catch this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for what? For his good pleasure. Now. Now, the Greek rendering of, of that, that phrase work out uh, means a continually work um, to bring something in, into fulfillment or completion. It's a continual work. We're continually working to bring something uh, or, or something into fulfillment or into completion. And it's not talking about salvation by works. Or, we, we know that. We don't believe in that salvation by works. But he... But he is saying, Paul is saying, it, it does refer to being the, to us as believers that we have a responsibility to actively pursue this obedience and, and being more and more obedient and being more and more faithful in this process of sanctification. We're saved, are being saved, and will be saved. So we have a responsibility in this. And, 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 and it's why we have... Uh, uh, need to develop good habits and, uh, and, and character. If, if we have something in our character that, that, that just shouldn't be there, then, then we want God to change that character. But he's not gonna force us to do any of these things. He's not gonna force us to walk in obedience um, before him. He's not gonna force us to meet him in the morning in the garden as, as we sing. Number three, remember, um, when we say I, when I say I add, when we want to add to our character, to our life, it means that we must get into the habit of doing things. We have to get into the habit of doing things. And in the initial stages of getting into the habit, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to get up early in the morning, to read, to pray. It's going to be difficult to do those things that, that, uh, that cause us to, to prepare for this crisis, to add these things that are in the word of God, add these things that God wants to give us that we don't currently have in our being or in our walk with him. And it, it's gonna be difficult. If you wanna lose weight, it's gonna be difficult. And, and not that, you're going to do this, or you even have a desire to do this, but it's just kind of a, 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 an appropriate illustration. Um, if you want to run a marathon, or you want to th run a three mile race, the first thing you have to do is what? You have to take the initiative to make that happen, to, to make a beginning, the initiative to make a beginning. In other words, set your alarm clock. And if, if, if you want to get up and and, and, uh, and jog or, or do whatever you need to do before the sun comes up, before it gets hot. But if you want to run a marathon or a three mile race, the first step you have to do is you got to take the initiative to do that. And then you make a beginning. In other words, 
you got to tell yourself, this is what I not only want to do, I believe from scripture, I believe from God that this is what I must do. And then what? Well, okay, then what? Guess what? Just do it. That's what Nike says. Just do it. So take that initiative uh, to do that. Fourthly, <clears throat> beware of the tendency to ask the way when you know it perfectly well. When God's laying something upon your heart through the word of God, through the Holy Spirit leading you to the word of God, whatever it is, beware of the tendency to ask the way when you know it perfectly well. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's go back to Psalm uh, chapter 32. Psalm chapter 32. And look at uh, verse 8. Psalm chapter 32, verse 8. Remember now, you, you're, you're, you're getting in the habit of addition uh, before a crisis. You're wanting to be prepared for that, that crisis that comes up. And uh, you know what God is telling you to do. Uh, and, and sometimes we say, well, well, how do I do this? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Uh, but God says, well, you know it perfectly well. Look at verse 30, uh, chapter 32, verse 8. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. So God's going to tell us. It's his promise. I will, teach, I, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye on you. So when he tells us to do something, when he, when he gives us a responsibility or he gives us a mission that we think may be too difficult or, or we got to get in the habit of, of uh, saying, yes, Lord, I will go. Um, he's, he's talking, to, he's counseling us. He's, he's going to show us the way. He's, he's talking here about biblical wisdom. I'm going to give you the biblical wisdom to, so that you can prepare to get into this habit of addition before this crisis comes. And so what we have to do is we've got to stop hesitating and we have to take that first step. You know, uh, I don't need to impress anybody with this. I'm, I'm too old and uh, not going anywhere else. Other, other, uh, I'm not going anywhere else, uh, but I want to, and I'm not bragging on this, but it's just a fact. On February the 20th of 1981, and I went back into my box of all my runner's logs here. On February 20th of 1981 at Aberdeen Proving Ground on their running track, I took this notebook. I don't see it. No, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this notebook here? I don't know where my camera is on this thing. Let me get it here. Oh, well, I got a spiral notebook here. And in this spiral wrote notebook with a pencil, I wrote one half lap. Mary? One half um, lap. Um, the, um, hmm, I was. I'm sorry. I was, okay. Let's go back to Everton Proving Ground, 1981. Evolved in this spiral notebook, one half lap. 2.51 minutes to go to jog, if you could even call it that, one half mile uh, uh, lap around that track. And that figured out to two minutes and uh, two minutes and 51 seconds to be able to do that. That figured out to over a 20 minute per mile. Now, in 2023, <laughs> I've got this very professional log here, wherever my camera is. Anyhow, I got this very professional log, and I noted in here, and this is for 2023, I noted in here, coming forward, bringing forward 65,631.1 miles. 6,000, uh, 65,631.1, I am not going to forget that point one, point one miles since I could not do a half a lap on a track back in 1981. 
the point began be with a purpose. Uh, I did this with a purpose, but I did it with fear or concern or trepidation. Why? Because the army said that we're increasing your uh, physical fitness standard, your physical fitness test for your next test, beginning your next test, which wasn't far away, that you got to run two miles now, not one mile. Well, as someone who was smoking two and a half packs of cigarettes a day, that was going to be a little difficult, right? But I had to be motivated. And this was the motivation to stay in the Army, to, to, to continue to have a career there. But the first step of motivation was to take that first step. And this leads me to my fifth encouragement to you. Be determined to act immediately in faith on what God speaks to you. And then listen. Be determined immediately in faith on what God speaks to you. Listen, you're... And, and, and Oswald Chambers said this, he says, never reconsider or change your initial decision. I made the decision. I wanted a career in the Army. I was a major at that time. So I didn't want to, you know, I, I was over 10 years. So I didn't want to lose everything and not have a retirement. And besides that, I loved the Army. I loved flying at, at that time. But never reconsider or change your initial decision. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in the habit of, uh, of reading the Bible. I'm going to get in the habit of praying. I'm going to get in the habit of getting up in the morning or whatever it is that I need to do to be able to do this. And, and never reconsider or change that initial decision. Satan's going to want you to do that. Satan's going to want to say, you can never do that. You can't run a half a lap. You're smoking two and a half packs of cigarettes a day. And you think at somewhere down the line, you're going to run a couple of marathons? You fool. So be determined to immediately in faith, when God speaks to you, you do it. You know, if you hesitate, listen to me, if you, if you hesitate when God leads you or impresses you to do something, and you don't do it, what does that do? Aren't you, in fact, aren't, aren't I, in fact, rejecting God, rejecting the the um, the, the command or the opportunity to, that he gave to me or gave to you for the purpose that he has to, to, to bring us along on that purpose that he has for us? To, and, and aren't we rejecting the promises that are in scripture there that, that assure us that he's going to be with us? He's not going to lead us. He's going to counsel us. He's going to do all those things for us. Aren't we rejecting his grace in which we are to take our stand in, 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 our word, in his word of God and in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to be determined um, by addition into our character, into our spiritual walk to, to do these things. And then sixth, a, a sixth encouragement I would, would share. Make your decision of your will. This is my will. This is what I want my will to do right now. Make your decision of your will right now. And then listen, make it impossible to go back. Make it impossible to go back once you say, this is the will that I have. I'm, my decision. I'm going to lose weight. My decision. I'm going to uh, quit smoking. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to quit that. This is my decision. And make it impossible to go back. Oswald Chambers says, burn your bridges behind you. Well, how do you burn your bridges behind you? I burn my bridges behind me and talking about the, the jogging, I, I quit smoking. I quit, just quit smoking. But, but how do you do that? Well, um, write that letter or that note that you may know in your mind that you really ought to be writing this letter or this note, but you're just really hesitant to do it. Or, or make that call or that visit that you've been dreading to make, but you know in your heart from God you must do that. Well, how about paying whatever debt that you may owe? 
And it doesn't always mean money, not, not even necessarily talking about money, but pay whatever debt. Could it be a debt to repay the love, to repay the forgiveness, to repay the comfort that someone gave you somewhere along the line, the encouragement, somebody that picked you up or told you you can do this or just encouraged you that you can go through this trial, this crisis, this operation, whatever it is, you can do this. And, and maybe we need to repay them. After all, God paid a debt that we owed. He paid it. And so isn't there something that that we owed by being his hands, feet, and voice and, and being obedient and growing closer and closer to his son, Jesus Christ, and, and, and being stronger in our faith, especially when a, a crisis hits? Listen, when you do, when you pick up that phone and make that call, when, when, when you write that letter or that note, uh, maybe it's asking for forgiveness. Maybe it's asking, can I meet with you? Can we just talk? Whenever you make that decision to pay that debt, whatever that debt is outstanding that you know in your heart, you really need to do this. When you do that, it's irrevocable. It's irrevocable because you've done it. Um, when, when you do the thing you fear, that death of fear is certain. You've done it. So the next time you have to do it, you've already done it. That fear of death or fear of failure, it's done because you've done it. Um, when you do, when you do this, when, when, when you develop the habit before a crisis, let me tell you something hugely important. You are going to know the habit has been formed in you by these actions, by the things we, that I sought to encourage you tonight. When, you know when that habit has been developed. I knew when my habit was developed, I got in the habit of jogging. It, it was, it, it's a thing I do, a thing I still try to do, although not very well right now, but, uh, but, but I know that that habit has been developed. And so this is, Oswald Chambers said this also, and this is huge. We have to take the initiative from where we are, not where we have not yet been. We have to take the initiative from where we are, not where we haven't been. I had to take the initiative to quit smoking from where I was. I had to take the initiative to take that first step on that track, not knowing of where that, that that habit would become my enjoyment most of the time, my enjoyment, my pastime, the thing that I believe with all of my heart that has kept me healthy um, and, and, and stronger, both mentally and physically for all these years that has allowed me to pass the average age of a man in, in the United States today. And it all began with that first step. It began with the will, the purpose, the goal of passing that Army PT test. And then when I entered the seminary, it began with that will to do whatever it took that because God called me into the ministry that some way, somehow, I could be uh, called by a church to be able to fulfill that purpose that God had laid upon my heart. Hadn't been there yet. Hadn't run a marathon yet from that track. Hadn't gotten a church. In fact, I had great doubts, great doubts that I would ever get a church. And I remember one, one search team after I interviewed with them uh, there at seminary, I got one of the guys coming out and I said, hey, would you be honest with me? What's my chances? And he looked at me and he said, sir, I'm sorry, you're just too old. I was 50 years old at that time. So, so I'm, 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 I'm grateful for you for enduring me uh, at, at my current age. So what's the application? Let me just ask you something. Can you remember the first step 
that you took when you were fearful or maybe you were in a crisis or facing a crisis or or maybe the fear uh, uh, the, the fear that you may have the anxiety you may had for for an interview for this job opportunity um, God's amazing grace gives us his, his amazing grace when we take that step, when, when we add to where we are, his preparation for us to meet anything, to any mission that he gives us, any crisis in life, the results of that will be something that we could never ever have imagined when we took that first step because we believed it was our will to do it. And we believe that it was God's will to have us do it. Can you remember that time? How did it come out for you? Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, God, Lord, uh, Lord, so many times in life, there are so many things that come up, at least in my life, that cause anxiety that Satan wants to use to... Um, create fear in my mind or anxiety in my mind or to tell me that's impossible for me to do something like that uh, and tell me I'm too old, I'm, I'm too this, I'm too that. You'll embarrass yourself. Lord, it's just at those times that uh, we know that's from Satan. Just as we know that when we have developed that habit and we go into and through that crisis that we know that habit is good. We trust you. We have faith in you. We have faith in your promises. We have faith in the word of God. And Lord, I thank you that you encourage me. You caused me to take that first step when I didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it, God, but because I love you, because I believe, maybe with even a little faith, but it was faith enough that you had given me to take that first step, not knowing the kind of faith I was going to have in the future, Lord. And Lord, I, I, I truly believe that, as I look back on my life right now, not just the ministry, Lord, but as I look back on my life, your hand was there all the time. I didn't know it until now or till later. I had no idea, no concept of what you wanted to do through my life. Just to be your hands, your feet, your voice, your heart, to minister to people. to be obedient to you. And Father, again, this is something I could never imagine through all the fears, all the anxieties, all the, all the failures or the hiccups or the pick me ups and take me back to start over to do it right again that you often do. God, all I can say is from where I stand tonight, I'm the luckiest man, and I say that with sincerity, in this world. And I just praise you. I praise you, God, that your word can touch each heart that's here tonight. It can give them that courage to do what you want them to do, to make amends, to ask for forgiveness, to give forgiveness, to, to heal a marriage, to heal a to have the faith in a financial situation. Oh God, we are so blessed. Lord, make our loving you a habit. A habit that we cannot wait to awake in the morning to carry on and to show you our love for you in our and our appreciation for what you have done in each of our lives. And, and most of all, that you 
have led us to the cross to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to take away all our sin, for him to take all of our punishment, to take your wrath when it should have been us. God, we owe you a debt that if I were to live a hundred years on this earth, I could never repay it. But God, I sure want to do it until my last step, until my last voice. And that's my will, Father, because I believe it's your will. And I, I, I pray that you touch each heart here tonight. Father, you love us. Why would you ever not be with us? And we pray these things, Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.